Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for the week of, um, I don't know, December 20th, apparently. <laughs> uh, let's just jump right in here and see, uh, what is going on for you at this time, Taurus. Uh, this first row looks good. You have the chariot, um, the sun now, and you have the seven of wands as well. But you have this blessed card, so there is clearly some sort of um, blessing coming in for you here at this time, but, uh, let's see, uh, what is going on for you here, Taurus. Uh, in your first row you, for the week, you have this blessed card, so I do feel there are blessings or could be blessings coming in for you at this time. It definitely looks that way. It is weird to have, you know, you have two good cards and the Eight of Swords here, and I always think that that is pretty weird <laughs> because it's kind of like saying, you know, like, don't block your own blessings, or, you know, it's kind of like saying, allow the blessings into your life with that Eight of Swords here. It could also represent the fact that I wouldn't really say that this is referring to a blessing in disguise. There has been this weird kind of like blessing in disguise energy going around, but what I would say is it could say that a change or, you know, leaving something from the past behind is going to lead to much bigger blessings than you realize. And that's kind of the direction uh, I feel this reading is going in. Because the Eight of Swords, it's like, you know, she feels trapped here. L you know, let's just jump into it. You have the Chariot, the Eight of Swords, and the Sun. With the Eight of Swords, it's like she is trapped here in, in between these swords and she is fearing that the tide, the water, is going to come up and drown her. But if she just leaned against one of those swords, she would be able to cut her hands free and she would be able to take her blindfold off. She would actually be able to see her actual reality, which is that she is not stuck. So for some of you, I feel like this is kind of like saying, especially with the sun, you know, on a very simple level, the sun can just represent clarity or needing to gain clarity on something that you're dealing with in your life or needing to see things for how they are. So I kind of feel that seeing things clearly would actually be very beneficial for you here in this row or kind of like seeing the reality of a situation would be um, a blessing and will probably invite more blessings into your life. I kind of feel, you know, this this first row, it's good, but it's a little bit, you know, there's a general lack of clarity here. I'm wondering if it's because of the blindfold that is on the Eight of Swords you know, on her eyes, basically. I'm wondering if that's why there is a general lack of clarity. I would also say that it's like your journey isn't kind of complete yet. You have the hermit at the end as your outcome card over here. And this to me would kind of like say, you know, there are blessings coming in for you. And the reason that this first row isn't immediately clear is because you're kind of like, on a journey. The hermit can be a rite of passage. It can represent going through something to get something better. And, you know, I feel like you need to realize that some sort of change is going to be the thing that leads to a victory. I just kind of feel change on the chariot. You know, the chariot, it's like these two sphinxes in front of him are aiming in two different directions. So it kind of says like you have a choice in what direction you go in with the chariot. You know, you could go this way or this way. And I kind of feel like you have a choice right now on um, the direction of your life. I, th I feel like I said this to you in a recent reading as well here, Taurus. So uh, let's dig into this and let's see where this is going exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, you have the Ten of Pentacles. Amazing. So definitely some sort of victory. And Ten of Pentacles to me is like ultimate success. But it doesn't have to just be money. You know, it could be any other type of success that you see in your life. Maybe you want a family. You know, everybody has a different definition of success. So whatever yours is, the Ten of Pentacles represents that. Again, I don't think you're quite there yet. And, um, you know, I feel like you're kind of like going through this rite of passage with the Hermit here to that is going to lead to the success but it's like you're on the right path with the six of swords you have the uh i mean with the eight of swords you have the six of swords moving on a common shore something clearly needs to be left behind the six of swords can represent a rite of passage as well by the way and not only that it represents leaving baggage behind a lot of people read this child as baggage uh here on the six of swords but actually the the child and the woman are going to the other side of the, you know, other side, basically, uh, for a better life. The thing that is baggage is what they have left behind. They are, they have basically left their entire life behind. There's nothing else with them in the boat. They're going to the other side to have a completely fresh, completely new beginning 
uh, here. And that's kind of what I feel for you. Some of you, I feel like the blessing uh, could be in some sort of sacrifice. We see a lot of stuff here uh, in your reading that would kind of represent potentially walking away or leaving something behind, uh, mostly the Eight of Swords. Intuitively, I have a very strong feeling that there are going to be some other things that come up here in the reading that would suggest uh, letting go of something from the past to move forward. Could be anything. I'd say it's probably like a bunch of things as well. It's kind of interesting because my mom, who's a Taurus, sent me a video the other day, and um, I can't remember who, who it was, uh, but they were talking about this time we're in, and they were talking about how we're kind of like passing through the this eye of the needle or, or something like that, and how we're kind of like squeezing through um, this time of where we're going to be like transforming on the other side. It's weird also because like the other day I was getting this message for someone, it might have been you in your reading, where I was like seeing a funnel, where it's almost like you know, the past few years we've been being pushed to this point and it's like now the funnel is going this way. It's like we're about to expand out. I get that feeling for you here, Taurus. Uh, with the sun, you have the queen of cups. You actually have the queen of cups twice here. Uh, queen of cups could represent focusing on love, like the one most important energy of the universe. So, uh, you know, I kind of get that for you here. Uh, queen of cups reminds me to keep your eye on the prize. I'm going to show you the big version just so you can see it. She's like really focused on this cup. It almost looks like a trophy, you know, She and she's really, really focused on it. The Queen of Cups, to me, can kind of represent maintaining your focus. It is a card of, you know, intuition, nurturing, kind, caring, nurturing, energy, trusting your intuition, all those things. But to me, uh, just intuitively, I always feel like she is really focused on that cup. And it's like the more she's focused on it, the more likely it is that she's going to, you know, achieve her goal, wish, or dream, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Uh, here in the middle row, you have this forgiveness card. So uh, kind of weird again, because forgiveness has been coming up quite a bit for the past few weeks. I wonder if it's because we're going through this transition where we're kind of like passing through the eye of a needle. Basically, we're passing through something very like a very tight energetic space. So it's like, you're not going to fit if you don't let go of things from the past. Um, or if you don't forgive things from the past. And so I feel for a lot of you, forgiveness is going to be extremely important. Again, I like I don't care what people do. People always leave me comments. They're like, I'm never going to forgive. And all this other stuff, I'm like, I, I mean, it, that's fine. <laughs> don't. Uh, but, you know, what I would say is if you want to fit through the eye of the needle, then I would definitely let go of the past. Again, it's only hurting you. I always like to remind those people, like, yeah, I understand that forgiveness is a hard thing to do. But uh, at the same time, it's like, uh, usually the type of people in our lives who need that type of forgiveness, who hurt us that much, it's like, they're living in your head rent free. It's like people that do something that's so bad that it's so hard for you to forgive. It's like they usually don't care. <laughs> so it's like, I know that's harsh. I know that sounds harsh, but at the same time, they, they usually that type of person, um, it's like they, they have moved on. It's like they're living in, in your head rent free. So you might as well kind of like let it go. So I feel like forgiveness is more for you. It's not about them. And again, I'm not suggesting, you know, if someone's done something very bad to you, I'm not suggesting you, you don't even have to contact them or anything like that to forgive them. You can just forgive them in your own heart. And the Queen of Cups would definitely do that as well. Uh, you have the Temperance card, the Queen of Cups, and the Seven of Wands. The uh, Temperance card is like turning one thing into another. So again, maybe you don't like a person, maybe they've hurt you, and the Temperance card could be you kind of transforming that energy into something else so that you can be more successful or, you know, do whatever you want to do in your life. Uh, the other thing is, is you have these Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is kind of like more of that just like flicking something off, you know, that's how I'm seeing this for you in your head. It's like maybe the type of forgiveness that you're doing, maybe it's not actually forgiveness. Maybe you're just kind of like, fl you know, flicking the energy off of you so that you're like removing the attachments uh, that might be a good thing for you to do as well here, Taurus, like maybe doing some attachment removal exercises or I don't know, there's like a bunch of things like cord cutting, you know, stuff like that. I think anything like that would be very beneficial for you uh, with this energy. And so again, maybe you don't even have to forgive, maybe just some cord cutting would be very beneficial for you, especially if someone has hurt you very deeply. Uh, for some of you, I feel it is, um, you know, again, like I said, I feel like some, for some of you, someone has done you dirty here. It, that's like intuitively what I'm feeling. Uh, it, it could be a parent, you know, it could be um, a, a loved one, it could be a lover, something like that. And I, I do feel like it is something that is hard to forgive. But it's like, once you do it, I feel like you're going to be setting yourself free here with that seven of wands. Pretty simple energy here. 
And with, look, look at this. With the Temperance card, you have Balance returning. With the Justice card, both cards represent balance or bringing things into balance. Justice could be justice as well or uh, kind of receiving justice. The Justice card can also be kind of like uh, taking a neutral approach. It's not like saying, like maybe you're not uh, actually forgiving a person, but maybe you're just letting it go, like being more neutral. It's like you're still, you're kind of like seeing it from the middle. With the uh, Queen of Cups, you have the tower here. Um, again, some sort of separation. The thing with the tower is that these two people are kind of being forced out of the tower. One person, I always say, is like diving headfirst out of the tower, the person in the red. The person in the blue is like, oh my god, I'm so surprised. You know, even though they saw the smoke, they saw the fire, they're still surprised. I always say with the tower, don't be the person in the blue. <laughs> the person in the red has realized, like, okay, I've built my walls up too high. I need to be, come back down to earth. I need to ground myself in reality. So it's like the person in the red has had the realization. The person in the blue is being blindsided. So I would say, like, you know, again, focus. I don't think the tower has to be that big of a deal. Uh, with the Seven of Wands, you have the Nine of Swords. Again, get out of your head. Uh, Nine of Swords is like reliving a nightmare. It's uh, going to bed, having a nightmare, waking up, being stuck in a nightmare. Uh, for, some, for some of you, I feel like this forgiveness that needs to happen is so that you can move on from some sort of repetitive nightmare situation, basically, that you are living with the Nine of Swords. Uh, for others, I do feel like it's saying like the, the situation is temporary. Kind of like at the beginning of the reading, I was feeling like these blessings coming in. But like I was saying, the Eight of Swords energy is very strange to get between the Chariot and the Sun. Two very, very positive cards. So I feel for some of you, this is kind of like, like I think you don't realize how quickly things are going to turn around for you here with this energy. It looks pretty good to me here, Taurus, actually. I think that there could be a rapid turnaround. I think, you know, the Nine of Swords, personally, I do consider it to be the worst card in the Tarot. Um, you know, the most challenging. I don't really think Tarot is good or bad. I, I think that it's meant to just be very, very loose advice. And trust me, I do this for a living. So, <laughs> you know, again, I think it's meant to be like just a loose advice at best, right? And But what I would say is that the Nine of Swords is meant to represent something temporary. It's not meant to be something that lasts for a long time. Uh, at the end here, you have this time machine card. Uh, I do feel there is a lot of like reminiscing energy here, wishing you could go back to the past and all this other stuff. I actually kind of do feel like in a sense you're getting a second chance here in this last row, but... It's not like a second chance, second chance. I think that you're maybe getting an opportunity to manifest a dream or live a dream that you've wanted to live for a very long period of time here. And it looks uh, pretty good to me. You have the Six of Wands. The Ten of Wands and this uh, King of Wands really wanted to come out together. You couldn't really see it, but I was struggling to get these two cards apart. Uh, and you have the Hermit here as well. So I feel like the Hermit is the most important thing here. Six of Wands is also important. You know, this guy, he is being celebrated for doing a good job. He is ha has had a victory. And the Six of Wands itself is a card of excellence. It's a card of just doing a good job or being able to do a good job at something that you're doing. It's kind of like a card of a victory as well. And it's coming up with this chariot in the top row. And then you have the Hermit, which is kind of like saying you have climbed to the top of this mountain you are now shining your inner light. He might not be very sure of like what direction to go in, but he could easily set, he, you know, his legs could be stuck in the snow there, but he could easily take that lantern. He could put it at his feet and he could thaw out his feet. He could, you know, start moving forward here. I don't normally say that with the hermit, but that's kind of like what I'm feeling for you here. You do have like a lot of burdens here. Ten of wands, you know, with the king of wands here. Some of you could be a fire sign that you need to forgive here in this situation. But the ten of wands is, again, you are the one that's carrying the wants. It's not the other person. Look at it, that king of wands has one want. He's only focused on himself. Like I was saying, it's like sometimes I think when there's someone who has done something so bad that we have a hard time forgiving them, it's like um, they don't they don't really care if you forgive them or not. It's like a bad person is a bad person is what I'm trying to say. They don't live by the same rules. It's like by you holding on to any pain, it's like they're just living in your head rent free. I only feel that for for some of you here with that King of Wands. Uh, for others, I feel like this is success coming in for you. I kind of feel like that King of Wands is attention that's coming in for you as well, uh, especially with the sun. The sun can represent a lot of attention, uh, a lot of success and things like that. But uh, let's see. Um, with the Six of Wands, you have the Five of Pentacles. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is like, um, you know, I kind of get that tightrope feeling for you here, Taurus, where I feel like this week could be one of those weeks where you're really going to have to, like, focus on the good side of things, right? 
um, and not the bad side of things, especially with that Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles specifically says, do not call attention to your weaknesses. It, you know, it really says, make sure to pay attention to the good stuff that could be happening for you. Um, so I would make sure to do that. With the uh, Ten of Wands and the King of Wands, you have the Hier Hierophant. Literally, you have every single Rite of Passage card here. Again, a Rite of Passage is meant to be something that could be a little bit challenging, but you do get a reward at the end of it, so I'd encourage you to push forward. The Hierophant, he has three levels to the crown that is on his head. It is your card. It's like you're in your energy, so you're, you can easily handle this. But he has three levels to the crown on his head. The three levels represent apprenticeship, uh, they represent, um, they kind of represent mastery as well is the word I was looking for, but they also represent initiation. The three levels are initiation, apprenticeship, mastery. That's really what I was looking for. And so I feel for some of you, it's like you're in this, you're at the middle level. And this is a message I've been getting for like weeks for a couple of people. I think you are one of them, Taurus. Uh, you know, that, that middle level is a little bit weird. The apprenticeship level where it's like you're learning from the world. You're learning from a literal mentor or something like that uh, through life. And it's like you haven't reached that mastery level yet. It can be this a little bit of this like limbo type feeling or tightrope feeling even where it's like you're kind of like trying to balance things out. We see a lot of balance here. Uh, with the Hermit, you have the Moon. The Moon says, don't let your fears get the best of you. And it also says, keep going down this path that's on the middle of the card. There's a path straight down the middle of the Moon. And the two pillars there, the dog and the wolf, they both, they all kind of represent warnings to, uh, you know, make sure that you stay on your path, that you keep going on your journey. Uh, this is such a crazy reading. Um, <laughs> I just want to see, like, what is, where, where is this going here, uh, Taurus? Uh, you have the Nine of Wands here. Definitely don't give up. Keep pushing forward here with the Nine of Wands. Needing to set healthy boundaries as well. You have the Empress, abundant success. Like I was saying, definitely a lot of attention coming in for you. Also your card here, Taurus. And the Justice card, Justice is coming in for you here as well. Sometimes I wonder, you know, as well, Taurus, if, if you are needing to forgive a person, it's like if we don't forgive them, it's like we're not allowing the universe to bring justice in. I always tell people, people always ask me, it's like one of the number one questions I used to get when I did readings. People would say, is this person get their karma? I used to say, you can't ask if someone's gonna get their karma and, 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 and you can't be wishing that someone gets their karma. It's like, then you're not trusting that the universe is gonna take care of things, right? It's when we just let go, then the universe, you can make space for the universe to make things right. So for some of you, I feel like that's what's going on here. Uh, for all of you, I feel like there's a lot of attention coming in for you. I feel like you need to realize that, again, if you're in this period where you're, you're experiencing slower energy, a slowdown, tightrope feeling where you're going back and forth, uh, or like a, just a general dip in some area of your life, uh, it is just a temporary period of time here. I feel like there is going to be a lot more success. I, I just wouldn't panic is what like the feeling I'm getting. It's almost like... um. You know, the best example I can give you is YouTube. It's like YouTube is always up and down, up and down, right? And uh, so it's like views always go up, views always go down. <laughs> it's like if you panic in those low times, then you're going to stay down, right? And that's kind of like the feeling I get here where maybe you're just in like a little bit of a dip period in your life, but clearly you're coming out. And I would just say be bold, be assertive, get a lot of attention, and you'll be successful. Um, but again, I think you don't realize how good things are going to be on the other side as well. Like I was saying, I was getting that funnel message again. I, I can't explain it but um i feel like you're about to pop out the other side so it looks pretty good here taurus so thank you for being here really appreciate it make sure to watch your sun moon and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time but thank you and definitely enjoy your week